live vigils have been held uh, all over the world in response to tragedies such as the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida, and Manchester Arena bombing in England. Then um, a third um, vet, uh, vigil uh, for political change, reason is for political change. Um, demands for political change. Let's make that clear. These events often focus on issues such as gun control, climate change, and women's rights. In some cases, candlelight vigils have been held outside of government buildings to demand action from lawmakers. Candlelight vigils have been held all over the world in response to political issues such as the 2016 U.S. presidential election and the Hong Kong protests that happened in 2019. But overall, candlelight vigils are a proper way for people to come together and show their support for a cause or to honor victims of tragedy. And then basically this article kind of, I'm going to close off with this particular source. It talks about the symbolism of candles. Candles have been used for centuries in various cultures and religions as a symbol of light, hope, and spirituality. The act of lighting a candle is often seen as a way to connect with a higher power or to honor a loved one who has passed away. The significance of candles in ceremonies and vigils is deeply rooted in their symbolism and the emotions that they invoked. So then they go on to talk about the significance of light. Light has always been a powerful symbol in human culture. It represents knowledge, enlightenment, and spiritual awakening. Candles in particular are a source of light, uh, of light that can easily be controlled and manipulated. Hmm. The act of lighting a candle is often seen as a way to bring light into a dark situation to illuminate a path that is unclear. They go on to talk about the religious and spiritual practice, but they're basically repeating the same thing again um, and talking about the connection between lighting candles and connecting with a higher power. Um, they talk about Christianity. They talk about Buddhism again. But the Hinduism, also they're repeating the same thing about these certain ceremonies that are done to honor deities and to bring alleged blessings into the home um, by lighting these candles to appease um, or show respect to these uh, deities that they uh, that they worship. particular source that I'm going to look at for this particular um, this particular uh, episode in regards to the origins of um, of candlelight vigils and ceremonies is actually on learnreligions.com and we're going to look at um, the particular um, I don't know what you want to call it holiday or festival called Sawen, Sawen, which is also connected usually when you hear Sawen is with Halloween. Um, so Sawen ritual to honor the forgotten dead. So we're going to try to add this in. So we've already talked about these candlelight vigils um, across the the world across cultures we talked about um, their purposes um, to bring about change hope and everything but I wanted to look at this too to see if this can give us a, a bit of uh, a more perspective um, we did talk about religious as well and different belief systems this was actually published um, in April interestingly enough but of 2018 now that's also interesting all these articles were done in April the first two were done this year in April and this particular one was done of April 2018 okay it says as saw wind rolls around and the veil grows uh, thin each year many people in the pagan community take the opportunity to hold rituals honoring 
the dead. This may take the form of setting up an altar to honor the ancestors or to hold a vigil for those who have crossed over in the past year. Now, in general, we're pretty good about remembering those who have touched us, whether they were family or the blood uh, of the blood, they say, or the spirit. However, there's one group that is typically forgotten, typically forgot at this time of year. It's the people who pass through the veil with no one to mourn them, no one to remember their names, no loved ones left behind to sing their names with honor. Now think of the people out there, not just in your community, but around the country, who were buried with no headstone because there was no one to pay for a marker. Consider the old woman in a nursing home uh, or care center who died with no children or nieces and nephews to bid her farewell in the final moments. What about the homeless veteran who used to panhandle on your city streets, okay, who one day just stopped showing up at the corner and is now buried in an unmarked plot with dozens of others just like him. Then it goes on to talk about children who are lost for whatever reasons in, in our world and um, they pass away, whether by violence or neglect or illness. What about those who once, once who were once remembered, uh, but now their gravestones lie unattended and ignored? Okay, they said these are the people that this ritual honors. These are the ones whose spirits we honor. Even when we do not know their names, this ritual can be performed by the solitary practitioner or a group. Keep in mind that while you can perform this rite as a standalone ritual, it also works while being incorporated at the end of your of your other um, say uh, say when Sawin, I'm sorry, Sawin rituals. Then it goes into a lot of talk about the candles, um, the collection of candles, and the colors and the sizes of your choice. Each represent a group of forgotten people. If there's someone specific you know of who died alone, choose a candle to represent that person as well. For this sample ritual, We'll use a candle for men, one for women, and another for children, but you can group people in any way that works for you. So then it goes, gets into how they do it. Um, if your tradition requires you to cast a circle, if your tradition doesn't require, it's a good idea to make designated sacred space or some sort for this ritual because you're going to be inviting, inviting the dead to stand outside and watch you. You can do a simple uh, delineation, uh, delineation of the circle with string, bird seed, salt, or other markers. Another alternative is to simply create sacred space around the participants, or you can do a full-on circle casting. Okay, then they start talking about other stuff um, like an altar. Okay, uh, let's keep going. They say, so basically the feeling that I'm getting is that it's not just for that particular time of the year, even though that's in the title, Sawin, okay, it's any time that I think you're, you're deciding this, to do this, or there are particular days that they, that they do this for in their particular uh, religion, okay, or belief system, um, which I find interesting to me so I want I want people the reason why I'm going back to this is because I'm trying to make the connections as I said earlier between what we've learned thus far about the things that are ingrained in our world and our society and the things that we engage in and maybe our intentions are you know good but we're somehow engaging with other people who, like this movie I'm telling you about, The Lord of Misrule, um, they allowed this woman to come into this society, into this particular um, um, particular township, okay, um, knowing that they had no intention of they were not interested in learning about God, the Bible, or any of that, but they went to the, the, the whole motions of it. Of course, they wanted to get at her daughter. 
and then the whole goes back to the whole vigil thing um that they were gung-ho about it they even though she was looking for them they helped her look 